Your mission today is to help out Kevin. All right, so Kevin is looking at deals data, probably from a CRM system, maybe it's Dynamics, and putting it into Power BI, and well, this is my sample made up data, but he's likely looking at something like this. So they have tracking, they're tracking deals, which are in different stage, stages, new, qualify, negotiation, but in the end, either they are lost or they're won. And what Kevin is looking to do is to calculate the win or loss percentage and then be able to track it over time. So maybe be able to calculate something like this, like, hey, this is the win percentage. And of course, once you have the measure, measures have the magic of define once use everywhere. You can kind of graph it, slice and dice it any which way you want. So are you ready to help out Kevin? I'm Avi Singh, Microsoft MVP and best-selling Power BI author. And if you want to become a Power BI Pro, make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you are notified whenever I go live to answer your Power BI questions. So this question again came in from Kevin, who's based out of California, and he's a member of our Learn Power BI family. And again, Kevin is just asking, hey, how do I figure out this win-loss percentage? So this is a finished file. Now you can download the beginning file that I'm going to start with and the end file that I'm showing here at this one. So if you want, you can also kind of use that to kind of follow along or maybe try out and, and look at things in more detail. So in the beginning file, all I have right now is just have this basic data set, which is the date the deal was created, maybe a salesperson name, and I, I just kind of made it all up, uh, customer name, and the deal status code. And, and uh, we do have a key onto what each status code means as well. We're gonna load that in in a second. So let's start there. Now we're gonna load in two things. One, we need to understand what that code really means. Uh, I think one is new and so forth. So we're gonna load that in. And uh, the other rule is that if you have any column which is of date data type, then your model must have the calendar table. And why settle for any original calendar table when you have access to, my friend, the ultimate calendar table. So uh, go to my channel and you would find the ultimate calendar playlist. Figured I would just show you real quick. So if you go to my channel, all the good stuff is at the top, including my latest 2019 edition Power BI tutorial, and this is the ultimate calendar playlist. So let's go in and launch the query editor. All right, I'm just gonna click edit queries, and I'm gonna import the calendar table as shown in that video. I'm not gonna repeat that. Go to my channel and access that, and I'll be right back. All right, so my calendar table is loaded. I'm gonna hit close and apply and load that back to my model. And I'm gonna go next to the relationship view. All right, so always when you're building, uh, well, you, you, if you've gone through my tutorial, I always talk about how you should be focused on building a model, not report. And again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're probably missing out uh, some of the key basics which you need to understand. So go through my Power BI tutorial available on my channel. So we're focused on building the model. Ignore this table for now. We're going to use it later for formulas. And the, the lookup table goes at the top and the data table goes at the bottom. And we also make the data tables Dollar. Again, the tutorial has more details about this. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect. Well, actually, I'm just going to make it bigger so I can drag and drop and connect these two date fields. And voila, that's connected. Great. And now I'm going to make it small because data tables are, are squat, short and wide. Uh, 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 sorry, lookup tables are short and wide. Data tables are tall. Uh, so that is set. Now, at this point, modeling, by the way, is also a series of decision points. So I had a decision to make. I could go into this file and add a column here to say that one is new, two is qualified, and, and, and you know, three something else, four is closed, last five is one. I could add that, and I could do that right here in DAX. But guys, Power BI has a whole kitchen. And that's the query editor, and that's where you should be doing all of your clean shape transform because that's what where you have the most power, the most uh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of that functionality available to you. So I generally avoid adding anything here. So that's one decision, and that one is an easy one. You should be going to the query editor and treat that as a kitchen of Power BI. The other decision is whether to add it in this table itself or make it a lookup table, right? So the lookup tables usually are the who, what, where, when, how. So is this a lookup table? Is this an attribute in here? And I'm gonna go with my gut feeling. I'm gonna 
go with a lookup table. So we're going to create a new lookup table for there. And you could you would typically connect it to some kind of a source, some kind of official system. But for now, I've just uh, uh, kind of copied over, uh, you know, I have a uh, something in Excel, and I'm just going to paste that over here. And we're going to call it deal status. So one, two, three, four, five, new qualify, all of that looks good. So we're going to make it a lookup table. And, and then we're going to connect it back. All right, so that one is done. Hit close and apply. Bring it back here. And as soon as it's done, we're going to connect that. Oh, it's already connected. That great. It automatically detected and it did it right. I'm so proud of Power BI. It doesn't always work. By the way, the default relationships that you should be starting with is one to many and one directional. If it's anything different, mm, well, you hopefully know what you're doing. Otherwise, of course, uh, inside my Learn Power BI program, uh, I go into a lot more detail about relationship. That is one of the core concepts in Power BI. So this one is connected well. So let's move on from there. So we're on the reporting pane and let's just start building something out here. So what I'm going to do actually is define a few basic measures. So again, the tutorial talks about implicit versus explicit measures and uh, explicit is the one we always prefer. And the stock measures that I love starting out with are simple count rows and sum. That's what you should be starting your modeling as well. So that's what we're going to start with. So we are just going to say kind of modeling new measure. And the first one we're going to define is the deal count. And that one is simply a count rows of the deals table. Great. And what we're going to do is put that in our in our formulas one. I like organizing my formulas in a separate table. So that's one measure. Let's go to the other one and define deal amount. And that's going to be some amount looks good. Uh, let's change it to dollars. There we go. Zero decimals and home table formulas. Now we have those two measures, so we can add them on here. And let's just switch to a table, see how that looks. Let's make that a little bit larger so we can actually see what's going on. Okay, 12, that's probably good enough. So we have the dollars. Now, of course, that's that's what I love about Power BI and love about the measures that now you can slice and dice it any which way you want. So let's have some fun. We're going to go to the deal status. So when you have something available in a lookup table, you should always use that instead of what is in your data table. So we're going to use the, the deal status uh, from over there. Uh, cool. So this is a uh, new qualified close one close loss. Now, this is one thing which I which I did, which I, uh, you know, uh, forgot to point out, forgot to record, which is initially this wasn't sorting correctly. This was I'll show you how it was sorting. Actually, this is indeed not sorting correctly. Yeah, so it's it's kind of alphabetical. So what we're going to do is change the sort order for this. And we're going to say sort this by the uh, by the status code. And now it's taking us kind of step by step. So it starts a new then qualified negotiation. Cool. So we can see that uh, maybe we can uh, maybe we can take one of these and just do and create a pie chart out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, Stephen few wouldn't be happy, but uh, we'll go with that. So let's change that to a pie chart. Great. That's something maybe we can even see that as a funnel. And we have so that is a funnel. So again, it's kind of showing you new qualified negotiation lost. And of course, we can we can kind of uh, do that by let's see if uh, we can do it by kind of salesperson. How does that look? No, how about stacked? Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure that's super interesting. What about this? Kathy Susie? Great. And, and of course, we can slice and dice it across this. So I can say, hey, show me only Kathy's numbers or show me only Susie's numbers. And by the way, this pie chart, this, this looks really unfortunate. This is so hard. So typically what you want to do is you want to change to format, edit interactions, and just change this instead of highlight, which is this guy, to filter. So hey, if you're part of my Learn Power BI course, there's a lot more detail inside the course. This one, I'm going through it a little bit quick. So you filter and now notice it's not going to do the weird thing it was doing. So now it actually just filters down. And if we add some labels to it, we're going to uh, detail labels, category and say data value. So now you can see, so notice now it has eight, six, nine. And if I say, just show me Corey, it's, you know, it just shows you that. 
Oh, great, so I want to turn edit interactions off. So this is all well and good. We can slice and dice it. And of course, one of the things is we can do is just look at it by month. So let's go over there and say, hey, show this to me by month. Great. So we have that and uh, it's sorting really weird. So sort by month and sort ascending. Oh, oh, okay, month isn't sorted. So let's go in there and we're going to say sort month by the month num. If I had followed the instructions in the ultimate calendar, this wouldn't have happened. So I missed out on that. So great. So again, and you can still slice and dice. So you can say January, what's going on in January, what's going on in February, show me the deals that came in in March and so forth. So that's all well and good, but we haven't solved the problem that we set out to, to solve for Kevin, which was the, the win percentage won or lost. So let's go ahead and tackle that next. Uh, so you've heard me talk about this, that human learning comes before machine learning. So if we, before we can solve in Power BI, we just need to understand how a human would solve it. And, and I like to kind of really break it down. Sometimes I write it on a piece of paper or I do it in Excel. So how a human would calculate win percentage is they would look at both of these, right? So they would take the denominator would be 14 and the numerator, I should have done the numerator first. So, so the numerator, it, let's say if you're doing percentage one, that is eight and then divided by 14, which is the sum of both. So that's what we need, and that's all we need to teach Power BI. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So I'm just going to go here, and we're going to focus on, and let's do this by, by month. So I'm going to remove the amount for now. You can also calculate instead of percentage deal, like count, you can also do it for what dollar percentage was closed versus lo uh, lost, uh, one versus lost. So yeah, they're gonna, both going to be pretty similar. Well, let's just solve it for count. And if you need it to do for dollar, you can just repeat that same pattern. Uh, so for this one, let's try. Let's try a matrix, and we're going to move the data status here. And we're going to add, where's my month table? we're going to add our month to rows. Let's see what that looks like. So here we're only interested in the closed lost and closed one, a closed one. Uh, so I'm going to filter down just to that. And what we're doing here, by the way, this is I'm not building a report. So I call this like a working table. So I'm just wrapping my head around the problem. Again, human learning comes before machine learning. So I understood that, oh, this is what I need to do. I need to add these two and then uh, you know, divide the one with that. So I have both of these numbers and I need to add both of them together. Now here again, so I talked about how modeling is a set of decision points. Here my decision was I could write a formula to tell me that, uh, yeah, show me the lost plus one, but I wanted to flex a little bit of muscle in our lookup table and just show you then how a lookup table can be powerful in that manner. So let, let me bring up the kitchen of Power BI, right? So, and go to our deal status. And instead of saying loss plus one, you can add, we can add, let's say a conditional column and do something like this. All right, so as soon as it opens up, yep. So we get, we're gonna say deal maybe overall status. And let's zoom into that. And I'm gonna say if the deal status equals closed lost and you could have easily done it with a code but for now I'm just going to do it with that and if that is and and then if the deal status equals closed one then it's also closed and otherwise it's open All right so that's the way I'm defining it and the key here my friend is that it's possible that in your organization there are not five uh, deal statuses maybe there are 20 Right, so maybe it's, 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 it's a lot of different systems and you, you're tracking to a lot of detail, but what the lookup table does is it lets you group them into these bigger categories and, and, and you're totally in control. You can say, yep, these three are this category, these three are kind of similar, so I'm gonna group them. And, and so you're totally in control. So that's, that's the power of Power BI. So we're gonna go with that and let's load it back in. So now that we have this one status, which indicates both win and closed, we can use that in a measure, and a measure is gonna be a little bit simpler. And that's the strength of Power BI modeling. So I talked about that, and of course my tutorial goes in a lot of detail about that. We're gonna make sure we link it in this uh, video as well, is, is the difference between modeling. So if you do the modeling right, the DAX becomes easy. Because I know that a lot of people kind of struggle with the DAX part, and it's odd that if you just do the modeling right, the DAX part 
becomes easier. You don't have to kind of lift mountains there. Uh, so in here, we're gonna we're gonna take this one, copy this, and we're gonna take this one. Great. And I'm gonna actually remove deal status from here. So we have deal count. I'm gonna remove uh, that as well, and I'm gonna remove that filter from deal status. So I'm just showing months. That's it. And you notice how it just goes to all months now, and that's okay. And now I want to create a measure which does modeling new measure, which only counts the closed item. So I'll define it as let's say total deals. Um, total deals closed. So we're, we're doing the denominator first and we're going to say calculate. So the way I think about calculate, a lot of people trip up and say like, oh gosh, how do I, how do I think about calculate? When do I use which? How do I know? How do I know? And the thing is that calculate is something that changes the context in which the question is being asked. And my favorite analogy is if somebody, if I'm asking, give me directions from Seattle to Bellevue. So I'm asking Google Maps, and it's going to give me a set of directions. But then if I change the context of the question, if I say, ah, oh, yeah, give me directions from Seattle to Bellevue, but I want to avoid highways, you get a different answer. So that's what Calculate does. So here I'm saying, yeah, I want to count the deals, but I want to change the context, right? So you get it? So that's where. So really what I'm, what I'm working with is kind of the deal count. That's, that's what I'm interested in, but I want to change the context, and that's where Calculate comes in. It's a magic one of Power BI. So calculate, give me the deal count, but only where the overall status equals closed. And 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 notice here that yeah, I mean this is how modeling kind of simplified it. We didn't have to worry about lost or one. We just said closed, and that's it. And let's see if it works. So whole number grid. So I'm going to add this to the table. And maybe I'm going to go back in here and remove the filter on this, just so we can see kind of everything. So go back here. So notice that here, uh, January, there was just one. This has three. This had four. And it is doing the right thing, right? So if you notice March, four, exactly. So two plus two, four. Uh, let's check May. Uh, May is also two and two. So that's great. So we, we got the denominator. And now, of course, we can create the numerator exactly the same way. So we're going to go in here and say new measure. And we'll say total deals one. So we're doing win win percentage total deals one and in here i'm going to say not the overall status but deal sta deal status i could have used code as well but i like i like using words mm, uh, that's up to you that's a personal choice so i'm going to say closed one and that's probably right and we're going to add this to our metric and see what it looks like so again this these are my working tables. This is not how I plan to present at all, but I'm just checking. So January, uh, yep, there were zero ones in February. Uh, three, All three were one. That's great. March, we won two out of four. That seems right. April, so you see how, how I'm doing and I'm cross-checking it. And sometimes when I'm working with a realistic data set, what I try to do is I try to filter it down to something really small that I can visually kind of uh, validate. And sometimes if the numbers are too big, it's kind of hard, hard to do that. So great, so this is looking good. And you see how we're building this in Lego blocks. And that's one of my favorite approaches in Power BI, build things in Lego blocks. And you can follow that approach both with measures and when you do things in the query editor. So uh, Lego blocks are simple. And so it helps you take a complex problem, break it down to small parts, which are so easy to solve. You're like, yeah, dope, that's easy. But then you combine them and you can build something really beautiful and powerful. Uh, yeah, so approach bo works both there. So we have our Lego blocks, and now if we have both of these numbers and we just want to say this divided by this, that's it. Our job is done. So let's define uh, uh, one more measure, and we're going to say uh, win percentage equals. So we can say total deals one, total deals one divided by total deals closed. Perfect. Uh, oops, I wanted to format that as percentage. Uh, maybe one decimal place. And let's try that out. And now that's looking good, almost good, because again, so so sometimes people say, oh, Power BI, it's, it's not returning me the right result. And I say, half jokingly, that no, Power BI is always right, right? So yeah, I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, Power BI is always doing the right thing because it's following a set of rules. But what happens sometimes is what Power BI is doing doesn't make sense to humans. So 
uh, the fault is ours. We are the weak link. Um, all right, jokes aside, so yeah, I mean, as a human, I mean, this this is not the right result. This is just not what I would expect. So if this is, we didn't uh, want any, and, uh, you know, there were one deal, well, the win percentage is zero. So uh, it should be zero percent. So, of course, Power BI, in its defense, is doing the right thing. When there is total deeds one, so notice here the number isn't actually zero. It's actually blank, and blank is treated differently. So blank divided by one is, I guess, a blank. So it, it's that's what it's doing. So Power BI again, and it's in its in its own right, it's always right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something something different here. We're going to say uh, just to uh, factor for that. So we're going to say, well, if this is blank, so we're going to say if is blank this guy, well then just just assume zero, right? If it is blank, then assume zero. Otherwise. Just use the actual value, total deals one. All right, so a little, little bit of, uh, you know, kind of fix there. And let's see how it uh, operates. Not perfect, right? So you can see how it, it shows zero, zero. Oh, but, you know, look at this. So now it's it's doing this weird thing. So here it's, it's doing division by zero. That's not fun. So we're going to do one more thing, which is instead of the, the divide operator here, we're going to use the divide function. And you know how in some in, in some cases like people have just one mission in life? Divide has just one mission, my friend. Just one mission. It's there to help you give you safe divide function and ability to handle divide by zero. So right, so it doesn't it's 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 like very single minded. So uh so yeah, so the format here is numerator and denominator. So we said, yep, this is the numerator, this is the denominator, and there's a third parameter, but the default is blank, which is good for us. So we're going to do divide. And now you can notice that it's much cleaner. The, the NAN, which was the error coming back, that is gone. So that is our win percentage. And now, of course, we can, uh, and again, this was like a working table. So most likely how you're going to show the win percentage is uh, probably in a chart uh, and not with these one, these closed, something like that. And of course, you're going to blend it in with maybe some of these other information like, oh, this is by salesperson, da, da, da. Actually, let's, uh, let's bring that in. So we'll Let's do win percentage. And again, we have a very small data set, but you would see the strength of uh, Power BI. It's almost always evident, right? It's, it's kind of like the sun shining in the sky, right? It's, it's always there, even when you don't see it. <laughs> that's that's Power BI for you. Uh, so here, so we have the win percentage, and I don't know, maybe maybe let's quickly uh, change the color to something uh, more exciting. Uh, what, what is the color of money? Let's gold, why not? Yes, gold. Uh, so, you know, I can say Kathy, and you can see that. And, and again, kind of uh, uh, a small data set, so it's not very interesting. But you can see with a real data set how powerful this can be. You can take a whole system, a whole funnel that a whole sales team is working on, and you can group the sales team not just by salesperson, but maybe there are, uh, there's like North America, maybe it's grouped by states or regions, and all of that. And you can kind of slice and dice it, look at the trend, see who's performing better, see who's above par, below par, and learn from that. Like who are the winners who are over uh, outperforming others? What are they doing right? And what can they teach the others to who are underperforming? All right. So hey, you can grab the file at learnpowerbi.com slash download. We're also going to put that link up in the video and in the description. And again, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And for one, you're going to be able to hang out with me on our live show every single, every single Friday where I'm there to answer your Power BI questions. Until next time, power on, my friend.